Welcome back to Unveiling Buddhism, episode forty-five. In the last episode, we learned how the Buddha carefully prepared the five ascetics to understand that he had attained the enlightenment state before teaching them. Similarly, let us continue to learn about the Buddha's remaining five honorifics before we start exploring his first teaching. We'll skip the six honorific Samit Sam Buddha. Well, maybe because we are a little lazy, tihi. But really, it's because we covered it extensively in episode thirty-five. If you missed it, definitely check it out. Now let's dive straight into the seventh honorific. Buddha is also known as Sugata. This title means well gone. Or one who has gone to bliss, it represents the Buddha's permanent departure from suffering through attaining nirvana, a state where greed, hatred, and ignorance are completely extinguished. This idea of departure isn't about loss; it's about freedom. Leaving behind negativity and suffering is something to celebrate. In life, goodbyes are inevitable, whether it's parting with people. Situations or even ourselves. This honorific sugata invites us to be ever aware of departures, and since they are inevitable, it becomes wiser to consider what is well gone. Next, Buddha is also known as a tamer of mankind, Purusa Dhamya Sarati. This refers to Buddha's teachings that help people to get a grip on themselves. The human mind is a powerful force when clear. But it can be our worst enemy when clouded by greed, hatred, or ignorance. Take greed, for example. It drives overconsumption and exploitation, harming us and the world around us. Hatred, on the other hand, divides people and fuels conflict, while ignorance blinds us to what truly matters. These tendencies steal our peace and happiness, creating chaos in the world around us. The Buddha taught that by taming and training the mind, we can overcome these destructive forces and cultivate a life of genuine contentment and clarity. Therefore, when we think of Buddha as a tamer, we are reminded of the importance of taming our own minds. Did you know that beings from various heavens came to Earth to receive teachings from the Buddha? And guess what? These different gods and deities did not fight one another. Sasta Deva Manus Yanam means teacher of gods and humans. This honorific highlights the Buddha's role as a guide, not only for humans but also for celestial beings. More importantly, since beings from various heavens sought teachings from the Buddha, Buddhists regard the various divinities as fellow students of the Buddha. We are encouraged to focus on shared. Values like love, kindness, and compassion, transcending superficial differences like race, religion, culture, and so forth. As the 14th Dalai Lama famously said, "Kindness is my religion." This honorific encourages us to focus on the principles of wholesomeness instead of dwelling on superficial differences. And the final honorific of the Buddha, Buddha Bhagavad. This title combines two profound. Terms, Buddha means the awakened one, symbolizing the Buddha's enlightenment and freedom from ignorance. Bhagavad conveys a multitude of meanings: goodness, holiness, gloriousness, happiness, fortune, and respectability. Together, they signify that the Buddha embodies infinite qualities of goodness and positivity. After learning about the ten honorifics of the Buddha, you might wonder. How can we apply this knowledge in our daily lives? The answer lies in a simple yet profound practice: recalling the Buddha. This practice combines contemplation with shamatha, or calm abiding meditation. It can be done anytime, anywhere, making it a versatile and accessible form of mind training. By reflecting on the Buddha's qualities, we cultivate clarity, confidence. Focus and inner peace. It's a way to ground ourselves in wisdom and compassion, even amidst life's challenges. Let's start with contemplation. To contemplate means to recall and reflect deeply. 
In this practice, we focus on the 10 honorifics of the Buddha, one by one. Each title represents a unique quality, his moral purity, wisdom, compassion and more. By reflecting on these qualities, we connect them to our own lives, exploring what they mean for us personally. As we meditate on the Buddha's qualities, our minds become filled with inspiration and energy. Confidence grows naturally because we are aligning ourselves with the Buddha's teachings. This confidence empowers us to navigate life's challenges with greater clarity and purpose. We feel less overwhelmed by the complexities of the world and our outlook improves. With this new perspective, we experience greater happiness and balance. However, a word of caution, confidence, if unchecked, can lead to arrogance or a sense of superiority. It's crucial to remain humble, recognizing that we are all works in progress. This humility keeps us grounded and reminds us to continually aspire toward the Buddha's example. Through this practice, we not only move closer to Nirvana state, but also gain a balanced view of life. We realize that while worldly achievements have their place, spiritual fulfillment and personal growth are equally important. Striving to be a better person for our loved ones becomes just as meaningful as achieving career milestones or material success. Once our minds are energized through contemplation, we move to the second phase, focusing on the word Buddha. This is one of the many shamatha meditation methods. Here, we set aside active reflection on the honorifics and instead focus entirely on the word Buddha or Buddha, mentally reciting it and allowing it to gently resonate in our minds. Some practitioners may prefer to focus on other Buddhas such as Amitabha or the Medicine Buddha. The process remains the same beginning with reflection on their qualities and transitioning into focused meditation on their name. This practice aims to calm the mind and disengage from sensory distractions and uncontrolled thoughts. By concentrating fully on the word Buddha or the Buddha's name, the mind becomes one-pointed, a serene, unfavoring state of awareness. Think of it as a workout for your mind, a visit to the mind gym. This meditation strengthens your ability to focus and helps to gain mastery over your thoughts. When we master our thoughts, we can consciously generate positive thoughts while avoiding negative ones. Over time, this practice enhances mental clarity, emotional resilience, and overall well-being, empowering you to navigate life with greater ease and balance. As we wrap up this episode, let's take a moment to reflect on the importance of understanding the 10 honorifics of the Buddha. These honorifics are more than just titles. They represent profound qualities and principles that the Buddha embodied. They remind us that Buddhism is not about worshipping a supernatural figure or reducing Buddha to just an ordinary wise man. Instead, it's about honoring a path of awakening, one that guides us to cultivate wisdom, compassion and liberation from suffering. When we bow to a Buddha image, it's not a gesture of blind devotion, but a reminder of the potential within us. The qualities we revere in the Buddha are qualities we can develop ourselves through effort and practice. This understanding gives us confidence in life and motivates us to walk the path toward the state of Nirvana. Reciting the 10 honorifics each morning can be a simple yet powerful way to start the day with clarity and inspiration. It plants seeds of positivity in our minds, reminding us of the transformative principles the Buddha represents. Thank you for joining us today. May the wisdom of the 10 honorifics continue to inspire and guide you on your journey. Until next time, may you be well and happy. Iti piso bhadeva Aveha Samma Sambhutto Vichha Charana Sampanno Dugato Rota Vidu Anottaro Purita Dhamma Sarati Satsha Deva Manosana Udho Bhagavad